is up everybody we are back here working on Mike's car uh, Matt's over there building a set of gigantic headers for it and I'm over here playing with doors because he brought us a set of uh, Schoenig fiberglass doors that he wants us to mount so we're gonna play switcheroo take all the innards out of the factory doors put them in the fiberglass doors but uh, these doors are electric window electric lock so at least for this video we're just going to be switching over all the door mechanism to uh, for the handle both the inside and the outside handle and uh, the uh, door latch and everything so got my uh, tools laid out that I think I'm going to need because I already did this once because I had to figure out how to do it so I did the driver's side already and got it pretty well fit it's not like finish fit yet but it's fit good enough that it closes and lines up mostly right but uh, Yep, so we're going to take you through the process and try and shed some light on how to do this. But uh, I got my tools laid out, so this is what I think that I used. I pretty much had every tool in the shop out yesterday trying to figure out what I needed. So I think I've got it whittled down to this, but there may be some things that we're missing. But uh, hammer and punch, uh, usually for the rivets, which... Uh, I'll usually grind the head of the rivet off and uh, then I'll sometimes they fall out sometimes you got to punch them out so I'm using just the hammer punch for that body panel tool for helping getting the door panel off and uh, some of the uh, wiring uh, connectors not the connectors but the holders that hold it into the door for the harness um, small flat blade, a couple different sizes of Phillips screwdrivers, big demolition flat blade for, you know, beating things. Channel locks. I got a set of nut drivers. You can use a socket and a ratchet, but I like the nut drivers. Uh, good drill, a uh, set of drill bits. Usually, I think I was using the quarter inch mostly, and then I think I was using a 732nd too. Uh, I've got a ratchet here for uh, when I want to do the uh, alignment. I got the T50 Torx head for the striker. And I got a die grinder with a drum sander on it. I was, I was using that for fitting, but we're going to have a cutoff wheel and the uh, little flat disc on there mostly for the, all the switching everything over. I just had the drum sander on it when I was fitting the door. And then, uh, let's see, the hinges are from uh, Motor City Solutions. And uh, like I said, I already got the driver's side on, so this is only half the kit. But I uh, switched out the lock nuts for these regular nuts for uh, fit up. That way, if I need to take something off and move it, it's easier and I don't use up the lock nuts. But... Uh, as far as that goes, the only other thing I believe I was using was a uh, angle grinder. I think I had a flat disc and a cutoff wheel on it for uh, cutting the heads off the rivets and stuff. So. Well, I think that's about it, so uh, let's just dive right into it. So, door panel's still on this one. Uh, we need to get that off, so that's just handle and then I think there's a couple screws if there's none missing because the door handles are already off of it but we'll get that off and then uh, start taking this bad boy apart
All right, so we got the factory door all uh, stripped down, all the guts out of it and everything. Uh, a couple things when you're taking out like the rods and everything for the door handles or locks or anything. We're not keeping the locks because race car. So uh, I didn't bother mark or labeling the rods for the uh, key lock or anything like that or the actuator. But for the handles, I labeled which it was and which way it was up, or in this case, which way it was back. So this is towards the back of the car, back, up, goes up towards the uh, outside door handle. So we obviously want to keep both the inside and the outside door handles on this, so label both of those so they're, I won't forget which way these get, those go. Um, the only really trouble I had was the window was a little bit of a pain to take out but uh, after I knocked the rivets out of the um, little spacers that uh, clamp the window uh, you can separate those and then the window slid out pretty easy. The regulator on these at least on the power windows I don't know on the crank windows is spring loaded so you got to be careful about that because when you unbolt the motor it can twist and uh, slam into the window. Uh, I stuck a screwdriver through this hole to keep it from doing that, but uh, that's just something to watch out for when you're taking one of these apart, at least in the power window doors. I'm not sure if the crank window doors are the same. And then uh, unbolt your guides and everything to get the window out. I'm going to save all this because uh, going to probably end up going back in the fiberglass doors because Mike wants to keep power windows so uh, we're not gonna mess with the windows right now but uh, we're just gonna focus on getting the handles working get the getting the door fit opening and closing the way it should and stuff on to the fiberglass I forgot to take the outside door handle off uh, not a big deal. It's just held on with two rivets because, you know, Ford liked riveting things on for some reason. No. Bolts would be much easier. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna grind those off and get the outside door handle off and we'll switch over to the fiberglass door and get to put the stuff in it. Alright, so we got the fiberglass door up here and I uh, just wanted to show you what we're going to do and uh, what the cut out, at least for the door handles and that uh, and the hinges. So on this, on these Schoenig doors, he's got these outlines of, like similar to what the factory had and like stuff like this. This is for like the window regulator mount and everything. So, on this one, uh, being that we're not going to mess with the windows, at least yet, um, I'm going to cut this square out, this circle out, that way it can get in here for the latch. I'm going to uh, cut that out, and then there's indentations in the approximate location of where the uh, holes need to be drilled. On the other door, they were a little off. I drilled the bottom one out um, first, got the first bolt in, and then used a very small drill bit and tried to locate the hole. And it wasn't quite in the center. It was a little bit, uh, I guess this would be towards the outside of the door on both of these ones. Uh, it could be similar on this. It could be right in the right spot. I'm not sure, but that's just what I ran into on the driver door. Um, not a big deal just don't go and assume that everything's going to be exactly right and drill all the holes because then you're going to have to widen them out and then things get uh, a little loose <laughs> so uh, the other ones we're going to do is uh, I'm going to cut this out that way I can get to the bottom hinge and I'm going to cut a hole in this 
Um, I'm not going to outline it like they have it here for the window regulator. Um, but I am just going to cut a hole that way I can reach my hand down in there. And this is all stuff that's going to get eventually cut out anyway. So the other one here, this is for the inside door handle. And um, you can see it's kind of intricate here. Um, so it's a little harder to do with, uh, say, a grinder or something. What we use come up here is these little carbide bits on the die grinder um, and those can get into these areas and really get you a lot more detail so that's what I use on all of the fine edges and everything so I'm gonna get those cut out I just use a big hole saw for most of these um, like I'll use a hole saw for this one and this one and then for like this one I'll use a smaller hole saw that'll fit inside the diameter of uh, that <laughs> of the lines uh, that way I can take the jigsaw and finish the cut um, but it's just easier to start with a big portion cut out so I use the hole saw and same thing with this I'll use a hole saw about an inch and a half hole saw and that will uh, get me pretty much edge to edge on this and then I can use a jigsaw to get the big portion of it and then I'll use that little carbide bit to get the edges um, but as you're doing it um, I was fitting the inside door handle as I was trimming it um, rather than just following the outline to the T because I had to cut a little bit more in a couple spots and a little bit less in a couple other spots to get the handle straight. So, uh, like I said, it's a good starting point. Just uh, don't just go hog wild with it straight out of the bat. Um, so, anyway, I'll show you a little trick that I did for... Um, the slots on this because the fiberglass is thicker than the steel door um, so the slots on the uh, inside door handle we're gonna use like it's gonna go into this slot and these slots up on the front it's gonna go in here like that so these slots aren't big enough to slide over the fiberglass so what I did is I just took a cutoff wheel on the die grinder and opened up those uh, slots a little bit and that worked really good it just clicked right over it like it felt like it was supposed to so uh, I will get started drilling holes and stuff and then uh, cut everything out with a jigsaw and we'll uh, Try and see if we can't get this thing done. All right, so we've got uh, the holes cut out, at least where I want to cut holes. And now I'm just going to go through with a jigsaw and open them up to about where they need to be. So you can kind of see where I was talking about is I just kind of came up to the edge it's not a big deal if you go a little bit over on at least these holes because they're just access holes. They're not where anything mounts or anything like that. Oh, on this hole, you really need to be careful to not go over. Um, so you can see I'm like right up to the edge. Um, and then this one, I just cut a hole in the middle of it, but the outline is actually like up here. So still plenty of meat to do uh, whatever trimming needs to be done to get the regulator and stuff mounted but like I keep saying we're not doing that at least not right now um, so anyway get the jigsaw out get everything uh, cut out the rest of the way and then uh, get this uh, cut out for the latch and then I'll show you, I'll flip it over and show you the cutout for the, um, for the outside door handle. Right. 
And I just wanted to show what I was talking about with cutting the slots and these a little bit bigger. So I just got my cutoff wheel on the die grinder and I'm just gonna go into each one of these slots here. Uh, two on the, I guess that would be the back. And then these two on either side. I'm just gonna open those up so that they fit over the lip on the fiberglass. Uh, being that the doors are a little bit thicker than the than the steel doors So anyway, we're just gonna Go in there Slide them out too wide you can always take a little bit more off so it's better to go slow Took me a little bit to figure this out because I kept wondering why it wouldn't go on and then finally hit me that oh maybe <laughs> maybe the fiberglass doors are thicker than the steel doors. That is what happened. But yeah, I mean literally I'm just going right in the slot. Just opening it up a little bit. plastic so it eats away pretty quick so that looks like it probably work like that it snaps into place and uh, so just like that snaps into place works pretty good so yeah just really just a standard I think it's a 048 cutoff wheel around that thickness don't quote me but uh, yeah I just ground it out a little bit and slides right on just like it's supposed to just a little tip for you, so hopefully make things go a little smoother. It's a little bit better view of what's going on. So you can see I just widened out those slots a little bit just so that they can fit over the fiberglass a little bit nicer. A little tough to do one-handed, but slides over. I got it pretty much as straight as it's gonna get, and uh, I'm not gonna drill the hole for the screw yet because I want to get the latch in and uh, get the rod running through here, and then I'll connect the rod make sure it's functioning like i don't need to move it slightly or anything like that and then i'll drill the hole and uh, put the screw in all right so we got uh this hole drilled and 
forgot to mention before. Where'd it go? There it is. I use these uh, little counter sinks for the heads of these bolts because the factory ones are a countersunk design. So we have these countersink bits and I drilled my quarter inch hole, um, verified it was in the right spot. And then I put this on the drill and just that I usually put the drill on one, you know, just a slow, slow speed. Cause these cut pretty fast, especially through fiberglass and uh, countersunk good. So it's nice and flush mount. Cause if you don't do that, then when you uh, start to tighten the bolt or the screw, then it will actually start sound like it's cracking the fiberglass. So, because uh, it's only on just a little teeny tiny portion of the head of the bolt. So, you uh, when you countersink it, it spreads that load out and helps a lot. So, and I think I was wrong when I was showing you the tools because I said something about, I think I said a 730 seconds bit. Actually, it's a 764 bit. So, much, much smaller. But I use that to get in here and see uh, about where the holes need to be. So, you can see the other indentations where, you know, approximate locations of the other holes. So, I'll drill a small hole with that 730 seconds and see if I can get through um, the bolt hole and then essentially I'll just start working the bit out because um, it'll eat through the fiberglass pretty easy and uh, get the hole pretty much uh, just wallered out with the uh, 764 bit and then I'll go through usually with the quarter inch bit afterwards and uh, clean it up make it nice and round and then I will go through with the countersink bit and uh, clean that up, but I'll do that on both of those holes because otherwise there's a chance that I might miss. So it takes a little longer, but more accurate that way. So that's the way, that's the way we do things. So anyway, latch is almost installed and then I'll start getting rods hooked up to the inside door handle and I will drill the holes, flip the door over and drill the holes for the outside door handle. Show you how that goes. All right, so I got that all taken care of. And uh, this one was actually a lot closer than the driver door was. Those uh, holes were almost perfectly in the middle of those little indentations. So that one was uh, a little bit nicer fit than the driver door. Driver door was still good. It was just a little bit off. They were a little bit lower and uh, to get the hinge, or not the hinge, the latch level. So now I will hook up the uh, rod for the inside door handle and get that uh, probably mounted uh, the rest of the way, drill the hole for the screw and then flip the door over and get the outside door handle taken care of. All right, so I got the uh, inside door handle all hooked up. So if you see, I can close the latch here. So it's closed. Come over here. Pops a latch, so that's good. Works like it should. So I got the, I drilled the hole for the uh, screw and put the screw in. So I think now on to the outside door handle. Okay, so for the outside door handle, um, it's got this little uh, arm on it that the rod goes in and that needs to go through this hole or this uh, space here and you can see it's got the indentation for it so just need to trim that out that way this can go in 
and then you can set the door handle in here where you want it up or down or whatever to line it up with the um, door properly and then you can mark the holes that you want and drill them it's got these marked out and they were pretty much right where I wanted them on the driver door but I'm still gonna put this in and get it set first that way I make sure they're in the right spot So we got this all bolted in, you can see my hole for the uh, for that arm, and then uh, it's still a little loose so it's still, I can still make it straight, but uh, I got the first hole drilled and then I put the bolt in it and then I was able to lift the handle and then drill the second hole. That way I didn't have to try and mark it and take it back off and have the possibility of it getting uh, screwed up or the drill bit walking or something like that. So it's on there. It's straight. I'm happy. So I'm going to flip the door back over and uh, see if the rod fits on the driver's door. I actually had to modify the rod. I had to straighten the, the bend back out. So on this one on that arm on the handle this piece here just goes up into it and I had to heat it up straighten this all out and then move the bend up because the handle had too much play in it it would still pop the door but it was like right at the very end of the throw of the handle so I uh, straightened it back out and re-bent this 90 into it or this double 90 into it um, so we'll uh, flip the door back over and see if I have to do that to this one too give you guys a good view here this guy just goes into this latch and these just pop down into place Like so, and then you take it back out because you realize that you have to put it in the handle first. And then you pop it in here and it looks like we're going to get lucky on this one and I'm not going to have to modify it. Because... Lap, pops just fine. Has about the right amount of play in it. And it. Pops, so I think we're good. So it was just a map gas torch and um, a vise, and I just squeezed it, heated it up, squeezed it, got it straight, and then put it back. Uh, uh, in the door marked where I needed to bend it then um, put it back in the vise heated it up bent it on my mark and then uh, moved it out a little bit bent it again that way I could get that uh, L shape into it so lucked out on this one though don't got to do that so makes me happy that took like 20 minutes to get that worked out so should be good though that means we are ready to start on hinges so I wanted to show you uh, how I had to modify the driver side to get it to work um, I didn't have to modify this side luckily on the passenger side because it just dropped right in and worked so um, on the driver side though right here is this is the part that goes into the handle and it just pokes through this part and stops right here like this is just the stop for it so on the driver's side this was uh, only going into the handle to about here 
so when you would lift on the handle it would almost get to its full stroke before it would pop the latch so I uh, heated it up in the vise uh, with just a map gas torch and straightened this out I just squeezed it into the vise to straighten it out and then took it back over to the door marked where I needed it to bend um, for the handle to stop and then went over put it back in the vise heated it up and bent it 90 degrees on that corner and then bent it back essentially just made one of these just further out and forward of that one and uh, that uh, solved my problem and made the handle uh, work so in case you guys need to do that there you go that's the way I did it um, you could get some new material I'm not sure what this is it's just eighth inch solid rod is what it looks like but um, I just modified the one we had because we didn't have any material and it was easier just to modify it so that's uh, my little tip for that one but all right on to hinges okay so now we're gonna move on to hinges Matt's over there cutting header so it's a little noisy but uh, we're gonna use these Motor City Solutions hinges. They're just a quick release so that you can take the door off uh, really quick. Really open the door and it pops right off. Pretty fancy. Uh, but uh, so the slotted one is gonna go on the bottom because that's how when the door turns. Uh, when it hits these slots you, is when you can uh, when it's when you can pick the door up off the hinge Otherwise when it's not lined up with that it won't pick up and then this top one uh, The hinge for the door just has a little ball cup in it and it will uh, uh, Just sit on that ball but Anyway get this situated over here um, I'm just using the, the factory bolts so gonna get started on this and hopefully get it hung and fit all right so with these hinges um, on the door, there's no uh, little indentations or anything like the rest, like where to cut your holes and stuff, because you can use different hinges. You could use the factory hinges, you could use these quick release hinges. I'm sure there's other variations of these style of hinges. So there's no way you're gonna get the right one um, if you know he had put the little indentations or anything on here and it also depends on fit up so anyway with these uh, Motor City Solutions uh, hinges they have um, these angles on them and they are very similar to the door when you look so Essentially, we're gonna butt this up on the bottom hinge pretty much right all the way up to where it starts to curve because that's gonna give me pretty much right where I need to be to get um, the bottom of the door um, in to where it needs to be with the rocker. So, probably about there where I'm going to put this one and then they have these braces that go on the inside of the door and you can essentially use that as a template and when you get the bottom hinge on or you could do the top hinge first or whatever I just prefer to do the bottom hinge because that's going to set where the bottom of the door meets the rocker and that's going to be fairly important so once you get uh, the bottom one drilled or at least one of the holes drilled you could put this on here and make it as a template and then that'll pretty much give you 
where your holes need to be you can and you'll be able to move it slightly up and down to adjust where the um, top of the door needs to be but uh, definitely use that as your template because it's going to save you a lot of headache of getting the spacing right. But I'm going to go ahead and get the bottom holes drilled and we'll see what, uh, what I can do. Okay, so door is getting close. It's on there and it latches on the first catch. It's not on the second catch yet, but it uh, opens and closes relatively smoothly. So we're getting there, but I've got the body line pretty much lined up where it needs to go. It might change a little bit once it closes, but we'll see shouldn't move too much but it's getting there I've had to move these hinges a lot so I had to move this one towards the inside a little bit because the top of the door was hitting before the bottom was so I had to push that hinge out so it would pull the top of the door out but we're getting there. You can see I still got quite a bit left to trim back here. I was having issues getting the door to shut. And when I was looking at it, it wasn't the head of the striker. So this part of the striker here was hitting this second catch here. So it wasn't latching over it like it should on this side of it. It was just hitting it. So I loosened the hinges and moved the whole door backwards which I'm still adjusting it so that's just nature of it but that made things line up a little nicer because you can see where the trim line is I'm not gonna probably mm, I might on a couple spots but I'm not gonna take it all the way back to that trim line all the way down because it's going to probably need to have a little extra meat on a couple spots. All right, so we got the door working pretty well. Closes on the second uh, catch like it's supposed to. There's still a little finish trimming that needs to happen, but it's uh, fit in there enough to close and 
be fit where it should. It's just the gaps still need a little work. Um, they still need to be opened up just a little bit, but it's good enough that it works and uh, fits well. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot of taking the door on and off and adjusting the hinges just minuscule amounts because you know say you're adjusted oh a sixteenth of an inch here well four feet down the line that's going to adjust it you know three quarters of an inch so just really small adjustments here that's where these hinges really come in handy because you can take the door on and off like i was taking the door off and moving the hinges once i got it mostly fit where it needed to be so i was taking like i said i was taking the hinges off and moving them but uh so anyway um yeah moving the hinges uh with the door off is a lot easier once it's fit enough that it can close mostly at least on the first catch so i was taking the door off so what's nice about these you can take it off one-handed taking the door off and then just loosening the bolts and moving it you know however much whichever way the door needed to go if the door needed to go up then uh, move the hinge like move the top hinge forward or move the bottom hinge uh, back depending on where it needed to be on the striker so that's the biggest thing is adjusting the door to land on the striker where you need it so that's forward and back with the hinges and then the up and down is just once you get it set uh, forward and backwards then you can kind of adjust it up and down and get the body line lining up see if I can put the door back on one-handed I can what do you know so anyway body line lines up and uh, window frame fits fairly well I haven't even trimmed any off of this it's a little uh, larger of a gap up here but the I have the the door seal out of it right now because trying to fit the door with the door seal on it is very difficult i highly recommend taking that out to fit it and once the uh door seal goes back on it'll close up that and uh you won't even be able to see any of that but other than that it's just got a little finished trimming trimming to do up here i just trim it on his uh, trim line on the front because it's got this lip here. So there's really nothing you can do unless you just fill that with Bondo if you needed it for your front end or whatever. But we haven't trimmed our front end yet. It is mounted, but we haven't trimmed it yet on the back. So I'm just trimming on his line. That way it's a nice clean edge. And then uh, when uh, we put the front end back on, I will fit it to the door to that um, to that edge but other than that I mean it's it's pretty well in it opens fine with both handles those is fine when you just push it so overall I think we've got it pretty well taken care of but uh, yeah and any questions post them up in the comments we'll see if we can get to them uh or get them answered but i've covered everything that i could think of while doing it gavin over there playing around but other than that i think that's uh I think that's it so appreciate everybody watching and uh we'll see you on the flip side <laughs>